how should we deal with insults about the Prophet, peace be upon him? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Uh, an individual who studies the beautiful seerah and the life of the holy beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to the realization that insults and mockery and the attacks against the personality of the Holy Prophet indeed started when he began propagating the beautiful teachings of the religion. So he was referred to as a magician, a sorcerer, a person who is insane, accused of going through madness and so on. Yet at the same time, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he would be protected from these kinds of uh, provocations and uh, uh, attacks. Therefore, the Quran says, Inna kafayna kal mustahzi'een, we will definitely protect you from those who ridicule you. And today, we see the name of the Holy Beloved Prophet mentioned like no other, as was the promise of the Holy Quran, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ Your name will forever be raised um, throughout generations until the end of time. His name is mentioned, refollowed, remembered, uttered like no other. When we come to uh, understand that each and every Muslim in their prayers must mention the name of the Holy Prophet, and approximately they may mention them 10, 12, 13 times. And if you multiply that by maybe a Mil billion Muslims who perform their prayers on a daily basis, you find a phenomenal, astonishing 13 or 12 billion times on a daily basis the name Muhammad is uttered around the world. And this highlights to us as the beginning that no attack, no insult can in any shape or form uh, halt the profound influence and the magnificent transformation that and the inspiration that the Prophet of Islam has when it, when it comes to humanity. Yet at the same time, we have to realize the following, that for us as Muslims, when we consider the teachings of the Holy Beloved Prophet, we have to understand that reacting angrily and causing damage or violence or responding with hatred is not of the teachings of the beautiful religion, no doubt. And at the same time, what we do is we say that uh, this reason for the attacks and the mockery, either it's the uh, publication or the production of movies like the infamous Innocence of Muslims or the drawing of the cartoons by uh, certain publications like the Danish newspaper or the French uh, Charlie Hebdo or any other, has to be looked at within the grand scheme of things in that it should make us think are we doing enough to introduce the personality of the Prophet and his beautiful teachings to humanity in that are these individuals misinformed? Are they misguided? Do they understand where the lines should be drawn in that? There's this um, common uh, belief that there is no limit to freedom of expression. And Islam propagates that the human being is being bestowed by the Almighty with the ability to speak. That the utterance and usage of the tongue is a favor and a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, of course, the Qur'an also says, وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ مَسْؤُولُونَ That on the day of judgment, each and every human being is accountable for what they say. And we know very well that in modern day society, people aren't always able to say what they feel because that might be insightful, uh, might lead to violence, condemn certain events in history which people believe definitely happened, and so on and so forth. But the key thing is to appreciate that it's part of a plan that should be peaceful, that should be equipped with understanding and knowledge, but ultimately following in the footsteps of the greatest human being, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family. Sheikh, does this sound to you mm -hmm. like a, a very logical and um, measured mm -hmm. approach as opposed to an illogical and emotional one that can reap, you know, very little positive results for Muslims and for and non-Muslims and for the world in large? So through education, that's what you're, how you propose? Yes, yeah, so, so obviously in terms of all of these, uh, you can say, offensive statements which is directed towards Prophet Muhammad or even towards Muslims, so it is something has been already predicted by God. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim 
ولا تبلون في أموالكم وأنفسكم ولا تسمعون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم والذين أشركوا أذى كثيرا. Okay means um, you will be tested by God in your wealth and in your family. For example, poverty, losing the business, losing money, and by your family members also. You become ill. You lose some of the dear, for example, family members to you. And more than that, and you will hear, so you will be told by the people of who are granted book before you, and the mushriks also. What do you hear from them? A lot of uh, offensive things. Okay, but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time uh, orders us to be patient. And if you will be patient, وَتَتَّقُوا And you uh, protect yourself from the punishment of God. Means if you're oppressed, you, you will stay within the limit of justice. وَلَا جِرْمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا Don't let the errors of other nations to make you to be unjust toward them. So that is the limit. So Taqwa. don't fight oppression with oppression. Exactly, yeah. So, تَتَّقُوا تَتَّقُوا in here is, so them oppressing you should not make you to oppress them. Okay, but justice. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ That is the highest level of the, uh, of the behavior. Okay, so that is the like uh, initial stance of the genuine Muslim. So that is, you know, f fundamental. Every Muslim should know that. Okay, but then, then, uh, obviously this term of mushrik, unfortunately, is mis understood. Uh, I, I really cannot comment about uh, our Jafari uh, brothers and Zaidi other brothers, but from Ahl al Jama'ah, mushrik is not explained correctly. So mushrik, according to what Ahl al-Sunnah believe, is the one who worships the idol. Okay, but early, our early Imams, they explain it in totally different way. Mushrik is the one that God presents something but then he does not take it, but he presents the same thing on different way. So, for example, God presents that uh, prophets are the messengers of God and they're protected by making errors. And they are the best people to take from God and to pass it on to the people. But then some individuals come saying, no, actually, um, a prophet for a few times have been deceived by Satan. Satan played the role of God. And Prophet was unable to distinguish that this is not from God. Okay, so that is shirk. This belief is actually shirky belief. That is the actual meaning of shirk. But if this is coming from Muslims, isn't it this insult toward the Prophet? So why do we complain then about non-Muslims insulting our Prophet when we do insult it? So this type of, you can say, negative thought about Prophet, it exists within Muslims coming from non-reliable sources. So, but then if non-Muslims use this, you can say, information which is taken from us, to say it to us, we should not complain that, complain that. Because that's what we actually believe, isn't it? Okay, so I say, there are two most important things. The first is, apply the justice, as God said. So, uh, them making error should not make you to be oppressive, first thing, and the second thing is to come back to ourselves and to check our sources, which is like uh, assumed <coughs> to be sources of our religion, to check, is it actually source of religion or, because no one besides God and prophets is free from mistakes, isn't it? Everyone can make error. For example, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, everyone. So just because I follow Abu Hanifa, it does not mean that each single thing that he dictates is 100% certified by God. Never. So it could be that Abu Hanifa said a few uh, funny things about Prophet Muhammad. We say, okay, Imam Saab, you are great, I love you, but in this issue, you are wrong. I'm not taking it. Okay? So we shouldn't, we shouldn't be emotional toward these sources which is, you can say, humiliating the Prophet Muhammad. And it is not atheistic sources, but it is actually Islamic sources. 
Okay, so I think we have to find them things and rob them away. Not only from the pages of the books, but from the brains of the peop people also. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, it's a very idealistic approach because amongst Muslims, you know, there are hundreds of sects. We're never going to agree yeah. on everything. Yeah, so, course, yeah. it's, I mean, that's the ideal. That's yeah, the yeah. ideal. But yeah. in reality, it's, it's so difficult yeah. um, it, because it is such an emotional issue. How would you advise, especially younger, younger Muslims who are very riled up? We um, mentioned that one of the things that we need to focus on is education yes. and mm -hmm. um, understanding the Prophet, peace be upon him, his life um, in, you know, in an academic sense um, mm. and taking out the, the, the uh, fact that there are lots of misrepresentations. Yeah, and so filtering all of them narrations about Prophet Muhammad through authentic, genuine filter and not few conditions here that are fabricated by this Imam or by, by that Allama. But then, how, what would you, how would you address the issue of, you know, the fact that there are going to be, you know, disagreements amongst the Muslim <coughs> community? There are a lot of young people who are very emotional, they're very riled up, and um, it can lead to particular actions that can do the opposite of what Dawah would do. It turns mm. people away from, from that religion. So how do you think that scholars can help address that issue? Because it's not something that can be tackled easily, and um, it, it seems like an impossible feat. But, but yeah. what are some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, there's a, a beautiful uh, statement and narration from Imam Ali uh, ibn Abi Talib which says the greatest enemy of the human being is their ignorance. And when it comes to us as human beings and Muslims in specific, I think we have to face the reality that if we are not equipped with the right tools to deal with modern day challenges and to become true ambassadors of the religion of Islam and the holy beloved prophet peace and blessings be upon him and his family then we are not doing him or ourselves or the religion any justice at all in the sense that I believe one of the most effective me methods of uh, responding to insults of the holy prophet is to scrutinize our conduct and our akhlaq, our mannerism. How are we as Muslims? What example are we given to people about our behavior in society? Um, you see, there have been studies and surveys conducted in this country, in America, in Australia, and about Muslims and the perception of people about Islam and Muslims, such as YouGov did a survey in this country, which discussed a few years ago and asked approximately 2,000 uh, British citizens about their views about Islam. And 68% of the respondents said they believed Islam oppressed women, as an example. That's a huge number, you know. In America, uh, similar studies have shown, and whereby uh, around 20% of the respondents viewed Muslims favorably. And these should make us think. And we don't accept the notion that people say, oh, well, you know what, as long as you're Muslim, people are not going to like you. Not at all. Not at all. We have to try and think pragmatic and realistic. The key thing is that if each and every Muslim decides and makes that conscious, uh, determined, effort to refine or look at their behavior, their conduct, their communication, their uh, way that they deal with others, yes, it gives such a positive uh, influence and, and, a, and a brilliant image to others. And yes, we can't guarantee it for all Muslims, but surely that's what Islam is all about. There's a very dangerous movement now within the Muslim Ummah and that is people somehow starting to look at Islam as something which is a hobby. You know, I am a Muslim, yes, I may pray five times a day if I really want to, or go to Hajj if I really pushed or fast in the month of Ramadan, but it's become more of a cultural thing. I'm not prepared to go that extra mile. Islam, I know it's a cliche, but it is a comprehensive way of life. Everything is presented by Islam. We can't pick and choose. It's not for Saturdays, it's not for Sundays. It's for 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, the entire life of a mankind. Therefore, what do we do? We look at this system and say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for paradise. He wants us to attain salvation and perfection. Therefore, let's look at ourselves. Are we doing ourselves and the religion any justice by conducting ourselves in a particular way? Or should we be the greatest examples? And how beautiful is he here of these stories like this taxi driver in the United States where he found $20,000 somebody had left behind and he went and chased 
and found the owner and presented the bag, said, that's yours. And the lady said, you could have easily taken it. And he said, no, I'm a Muslim, I don't steal. But even further, she came back and she said, I want to give you a reward. He said, I don't take rewards from you, my reward is from God. Mm. Can you imagine the extent of the influence? I know the media is not on our side. I know that. And the youth may be disgruntled and say, whatever we do will always be depicted in a negative manner. That's a very defeatist mentality. We have to raise ourselves to the responsibility and know that when we wear the badge of Islam, we have to wear it with pride and honor. Yes, and when in practice, it is for our own purposes, but these individuals try to defame the Prophet through their insults, but we reciprocate it through what? Showing people the true values and the principles so of Islam. So the Quran says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٍ Quran gives us a formula, a beautiful prescription. It says, good deeds and bad deeds are not the same. Choose that which is good, because if you do, your worst enemy will become your best friend. So we have to lead by example, but how do we address yeah. the issue of the fact that there are particular people within the religion who are damaging the image, you know, through violent action? It's, it seems like an impossible one to deal with. Um, I think now actually you are just holding the most painful part of the body of Islam actually. Because, unfortunately, yeah, we do have, uh, well, you are saying it's individuals, but I would say it's groups, actually, unfortunately. It's mm. not only one or two, but big, you can say, masses of the people. And the problem <coughs> is in the teachings, in the principles that like, few groups may believe. Okay, so, uh, so if it is in their teachings that you have to be uh, aggressive against the people who don't agree with you, so there are... X, Y, Z reasons for, uh, for you to kill, for example, the people who are opposing you. So if it is in their teachings, they cannot be anyhow else. Because for them, leaving their teachers, teachings will be classed as like um, uh, leaving Islam. Okay? So how is possible to address this issue? Obviously, um, I don't know if there is any like uh, practical advice, but advices will remain as theoretical. So only through knowledge, but you, they should be open. They should be open to the truth, saying that what I am saying is truth, but could be wrong also. What others are saying, wrong, but could be true also. So by this mentality, going into the knowledge may solve the problem. Mm. But uh, as long as it is in their teachings, even there is this thing about, Opening the book of opposite groups, obviously, uh, is um, is classed as like a, uh, s stepping towards the heresy. Now, how how you can help them? So you can help them only by giving them book or by having conversation. They say, for example, um, not not only speaking, but even walking in the same street with the one who is oppo who opposes your sect. So that is also actually some. It has got its own sin. So is there any way? Uh, well, practically, no. Do, do Theoretically, think, yes, maybe. Um, do, do you think knowledge um, can help us to develop a thicker skin? Because we can learn how the Prophet, peace be, peace be upon him, dealt with insults. And he dealt with far worse than, than, than what many people have dealt with. So, so do you think knowledge does help um, develop a thicker skin? There's no doubt, I think, that uh, education and understanding the life of the Holy Prophet and the way he dealt with these challenges will help. But coming to the, ba uh, to the, to the problem of uh, groups of individuals who have hijacked the name of the Prophet and the, the beautiful teachings of Islam to suit their purposes, and they are conducting violence and aggression and are killing indiscriminately and um, interpreting the Quran and the Sunnah the way they want to to just satisfy their kind of goals and desires. How do we deal with them? And I think this is a big challenge that we have to appreciate. I think the key thing is that as a Muslim community, we have to realize within any community there will be a rise of extremist factions. And these extremists have to be isolated in the sense that they are the minority and we all know they're the minority. They don't speak for the Muslim Ummah, they don't speak for the Muslim community. Certainly they don't for the Muslim community here in the United Kingdom as British Muslims who have lived happily you know, for many, many years. And for them to come forward and create division and uh, friction and uh, somehow create dissension and so on, 
is a challenge that we have to rise to. The key thing is, I think, it's very important for us, uh, and I agree with Sheikh, that it starts off from a young age, that sometimes in madrasas, in the programs, in the teaching, sometimes we uh, inadvertently or deliberately uh, encourage those kind of tendencies to look down upon others and eliminate them or um, somehow think that they're out of the realm of Islam and practice what's known as takfir, which is, you know, taking them out of the Muslim uh, ummah or the Muslim kind of circle, so to speak. Uh, and, and that kind of uh, encouragement of hate and, and, and violence and so on has its own seeds. And there's a big responsibility for scholars and alims community leaders, um, those who are activists, uh, teachers, all have to make that concerted effort to make sure that the, uh, our uh, children, our youth, are not uh, drawn into these extremist factions which somehow paint a very rosy image and, and try to brainwash these uh, young minds into accepting their backward, very false ideology, uh, there's no doubt that there is hope and we have to work hard to address it. Mm. Yeah.